Technologies of ancient people amaze scientists all over the world. Every year, archaeologists are trying to get to the bottom of the truth in order to explain the origin of these monumental objects. In this video, you will also learn the history of famous people and their tragic ending. Hi friend, you're on the Kurtop channel. 17 Skeletons on the Grounds of a Welsh Monastery British archaeologists in Pembrokeshire, West Wales, have unearthed the remains of 17 skeletons in what they believe belong to the Monastery of the Holy Saviour before the Reform King Henry VIII seized their property. The monastery existed from the mid-1200s until its collapse in 1536-1541. In the last years of the monastery's existence, Henry VIII, King of England and Wales, ordered the confiscation and sale of many church properties. This happened after he severed relations with the Catholic Church. The medieval monastery of the Holy Savior, which was inhabited by Dominican monks, black monks, distinguished by the black color of the cloth, was no exception in this sense. According to Murphy, the crown sold all their property, but part of it, in particular, the burial ground that belonged to the monastery remained untouched until the 17th century. We don't know for sure whether these remains belong to monks, since a variety of people were often buried in monastic cemeteries. They were only shrouds on the buried, and the arms of all the skeletons were crossed on the chest. During the Middle Ages, approximately 500 to 1500 AD, monasteries were popular places for burial. Initially, the monastic cemeteries were intended only for the monks themselves, but quickly became popular places for the burial of the laity. The current excavations are taking place ahead of major construction in the area, with plans to build a three-story grocery store with a bar and a rooftop terrace in the area. Forbidden Text 2000 Years Old in China, archaeologists have discovered several ancient bamboo plates with hieroglyphs, the deciphering of which has shed new light on the history of the Qin Dynasty Ban. Archaeologists have discovered six well-preserved bamboo plates covered with hieroglyphs. The deciphering of these texts sheds new light on the history and evolution of Chinese reading habits. Artifacts were found during excavations in the province of Hunan, located in central China. The work was carried out in the city of Yiyang. The relics themselves were found at the Tuzishan historical site. They are ancient pieces of paper. According to experts, the age of the artifacts is approximately 2,000 years. They date back to the early period of the Western Han Dynasty. The excavations were carried out in 2013. However, it is only now that Cheng Chunlong, the head of the excavation team, has made public the results of a study of the findings made at that time. According to him, there are unusual records on six bamboo plates. In fact, this is the correspondence of people who discuss offering books among themselves. Archaeologists believe that the texts discuss the lifting of the ban on the private collection of books. For the first time, such a ban was introduced during the reign of the Qin dynasty. As evidenced by these bamboo plates, after the ban was lifted, borrowing, donating and collecting books became a social trend. Later, both the royal family and local governments accumulated an unprecedentedly rich collection of books. During the reign of the Western Han dynasty, people began to read more books, libraries began to appear. The Secret of Buddhist Monks Buddhism is one of the most ancient religions. There are many artifacts thanks to which we can restore the history of this religion, its values and features. One of such artifacts is the collection of texts of the Tripitaka Koreana. It contains all the knowledge about Buddhism that has accumulated over decades. These are not copies of already existing texts, this is the original, which gives a complete picture of knowledge about Buddhism. On the Korean peninsula, 
There is a Heinsa monastery, which is very important for the entire Asian culture. This place is remarkable not only for its beauty and tranquility that people find here, but also for the fact that completely unique texts are stored here. This collection has been accumulating for several centuries. Only canons of Buddhism are described here, and there is simply no other such complete collection. All these texts are stored on clay tablets. There are more than 80,000 of them. Sometimes, because of this, the collection of texts is called the 80,000 Tripitaka. All these texts are divided into volumes, of which there are more than 6,000. The height of each such tablet is 25 centimeters, and the width is about 70. It can be said that all the wisdom of ancient people is stored in these texts, and it took a long time to study this heritage. Now the tablets are carefully guarded, but tourists have the opportunity to see these texts live. The temple in which the texts are stored is open to travelers. Unfortunately, the collection of texts was almost completely destroyed during the invasion of the Mongols. All the tablets were badly damaged, but they were such an important part of the culture that the ruling dynasty commissioned the restoration of all records. Such painstaking and accurate work took more than 10 years. In the end, all texts were restored. They tried to make the plates as similar as possible to those that were lost. For example, the first tablets were made from white birch and cherry trees, and the same types of wood were used in the restoration. In addition, for the sake of preserving the tags, the tablets were framed, and this work, almost a thousand years after these tablets were made, they are in excellent condition, and the text on them can be read without problems. The tablets were covered with poisonous varnish so that insects would not spoil them. Traces of Denisovans in a Cave in Northern Laos in Laos, in the Tamgu Kaok II cave in the Anamite Mountains, a 130,000-year-old tooth was found, which, as it turned out, belonged to a representative of the Denisovans, a subspecies of ancient people whose traces were previously found in the Denisova cave in Altai and in China. The found tooth, molar, belonged to a girl aged three and a half to eight years. The age of the find was determined by sedimentary rocks in the cave and amounted to 164-131,000 years. The close morphological similarity to the Xiahe specimen from China indicates that they belong to the same taxon and that Tamgu Hao Tu most likely represents a Denisovan. The anthropological material of a Denisovan in Southeast Asia was found for the first time. The authors of the publication attributed the rarity of the find to the peculiarities of the region's climate. Also, in the cave were found teeth of large mammals, including Stegodon, an ancient proboscis animal, a relative of the mammoth, elephant, and rhinoceros. For the first time, traces of Denisovans were discovered in Altai in the Denisova cave in 2010. Then their genome was deciphered. After scientists found a jawbone in 2019 on the Tibetan plateau, proving that part of the species also lived in China. According to modern concepts, Africa is considered the ancestral home of mankind, but there is still no consensus on how this process went. A number of scientists believe that there were three expansions of human ancestors from Africa to Eurasia. The early ancestor Homo, about 1.9 million years ago, the ancestors of Neanderthals and Denisovans, about 700,000 years ago, and people of the modern type, about 50,000 years ago. According to archaeological data, Denisovan men, an independent subspecies of ancient people, appeared in Altai after a powerful wave of migration from the Middle East about 300,000 years ago. Its traces were found in the Denisova cave, from which it got its name. The Mysterious Tomb of Genghis Khan Death overtook the great Mongol commander in 1227, during the Crusade, and for many years, scientists and researchers have been wondering where the founder of the Mongol Empire was buried. There are legends that the body of Genghis Khan was returned to his homeland and buried along with a huge amount of valuables. Therefore, it has been a main goal for researchers, scientists, and ordinary treasure lovers for centuries. It is believed that after death, for the sake of the beloved Khan, 
gun, many people were killed. All passers-by who came across on the way to the burial place were executed by soldiers. After the huge grave was dug by the slaves, they were also killed. And then they killed the soldiers who killed the slaves. Although there is a version that the soldiers independently and voluntarily committed suicide in order to serve Genghis Khan even after death. Further versions of the legend about the burial of the commander diverge. The first of them says that the course of the river was changed, which to this day hides the grave. The second suggests that after the burial, a herd of horses was released, which trampled all traces of the excavated earth. Today, the Mongols still appreciate and revere Genghis Khan. The country doesn't look for his burial, because they believe that it is a great sin to violate the will of the founder of the Mongol Empire to be secretly buried. Therefore, researchers from other countries can only build theories and conjectures, explore the area on their own or with the help of drones, but neither the state nor the residents will allow historical excavations. Famous Nations with an Unknown Future on the pages of historical books and textbooks, one can meet such people as Polovtsi, Aztecs, or Phoenicians. And this is not surprising, because all of them, to one degree or another, left their mark. However, today few people are interested in what became of them. Did they disappear, or do their descendants still inhabit the planet? And I'll start with the very Aztecs, whose temples have survived to this day. Many people remember this people for their rituals, but for some reason, few people pay attention to their cultural development. But they highly valued poetry and theatrical performances in which musicians and acrobats participated. In addition, they were engaged in sculpting sculptures and dishes, as well as carving wood. What happened to them? In the 16th century, the Spaniards arrived on their territory and found the city of Mexico City. It is easy to guess that today the descendants of the Aztecs are the Mexicans, who are trying to preserve the culture of the people who followed the hands of the Spanish conquerors. But if these people lived already in our time, then the Mayan civilization appeared even before our era. These people were remembered for achievements in the fields of mathematics and astronomy, and their exact calendar for more than once made a fuss. Perhaps many more discoveries would have awaited them ahead if it were not for the Spaniards again, who brought with them many diseases unknown to the Indians. Today in Mexico and Central America, you can find about 5 million people who speak Mayan languages. All of them united in communities and want to live in villages, where they are engaged in agriculture and selling their products products. The Phoenicians were outstanding people, because it was their language that formed the basis of many modern alphabetic systems. It was among them that there were prominent merchants and sailors, as well as glass and ceramics craftsmen. But just acquired walls did not provide their state protection. So back in the 4th century BC, the Phoenicians disappeared, and other countries, such as Lebanon and Syria, have settled on their territory today. Remember how the Gauls were shown in the Asterix and Obelix movie series? So all this Celtic tribe was, indeed, considered barbarians, although in fact they cannot be called savages. Their rather complex society revered the Druids and advocated gender equality. And yet, the Celts were one of the first among Europeans to wear pants. Already in the 1st century BC, most of the Celtic people sunk into oblivion. Only the British part remained, living in the territories of Wales, Scotland and Ireland. Despite the fact that these people have ceased to exist fully their culture continues to live and is actively sung by people from all over the world at various annual festivals. Surely everyone has heard about the Incas, who lived in the 12th century in the territory from Chile to Ecuador. But few people know that poverty and unemployment were not allowed in this empire, which they fought with the motto, do not lie, do not steal, do not be lazy. What is it about these people? The creation of a lunar calendar, as well as a method of transmitting secret information using Kipu, a complex interlacing of knots and ropes. And once again, a promising civilization fell due to the Spaniards brought a smallpox epidemic to their land. It is known that the Polovtsi were nomads who did not try to create their own state, but simply moved from the territory of Central Asia. 
However, it is unlikely that many have heard the opinion that the representatives of these people like blue-eyed blondes with mongoloid features. In the 13th century, the Polovtsi ceased to exist, merging with other people and adopting their way of life. Well, I will finish with the Bulgars, known today as the Bulgarians. Unlike the Polovtsi, they founded their state in the 7th century. After the adoption of religion, these people became close to the Slavic culture so much that even the oppression of the Ottoman Empire did not win them over to the side of the Turks in five centuries. True, the independent country known to everyone today, Bulgaria, appeared only at the beginning of the 20th century. Ancient Quarry in China China holds many mysteries. Among them are not only ancient burials of people with fair skin, but also pyramids buried under a layer of earth. The size of ancient megaliths, as well as traces of processing on their surface, conspiracy theorists believe that their origin is the merit of an ancient people with high-tech knowledge, as well as extraterrestrial technologies and living on the territory of ancient China. There is a possibility that it these people who built the Chinese pyramids, and at the same time, the first burials of fair-haired giants of the Caucasoid race disappeared. According to historians, the last development of limestone in this quarry was carried out in the 15th century. The reason for stopping work and stopping the extraction of the mineral are not known to science. Limestone is quite simply processed, so the extraction was carried out with the help of improvised means, as evidenced by chaotic scratches on the walls. It is strange that the quarry has survived to our time and has not suffered from erosion. Some researchers believe that the quarry was developed long before the advent of our era and the stone blocks were buried under a layer of clay during the cataclysms that occurred. And conspiracy theorists suggest that this place was a navigation complex, which allowed you to navigate in space, and the largest megaliths served as an infrasound antenna. Whoever was the creator of these monuments, one thing can be said with certainty. It were great people, or maybe something more than just the people, thanks to which amazing buildings and high-tech equipment are still found in China. The Lost Dutchman's Gold Mine Perhaps the most popular lost treasure story in North America is that of the Lost Dutchman's Gold Mine. Mount Superstition, located near Phoenix, Arizona, is a purported location for this lost treasure. In 1840, the Mexican Peralta family discovered a rich gold mine. Their last gold mining expedition to Mexico took place in 1848. According to legend, this expedition was attacked by the Apaches, and all members of the family were killed, except for two people from the Peralta family who managed to escape to Mexico. The area where the expedition that killed people past is known as the Land of Massacre. Few people knew the exact location of the gold mine, the number of workers on it was limited. Many maps have survived over the years only to be lost forever. The people who claimed to have found the location of the Peralta mine could not return from there, or some misfortune befell them before they reached the legendary mine. The legend of the Lost Dutchman's gold mine is that a German immigrant named Jacob Walter discovered the famous Peralta mine. Walter and his partner Jacob Weiser worked hard at the mine and managed to to hide some of the gold somewhere in the mountains. Weiser was killed, most likely by Apaches or wolves himself. Wolves moved to Phoenix due to failing health and died in 1891. He described the location of the mine to a neighbor who took care of him until his death. But it was not possible to find the gold mine of the missing Dutchman. Subscribe to the channel if you liked the video and leave your kind comments. Thanks for your views. Bye everyone!